I want to welcome everybody to His Glory Ministry as we continue our series in the book of Romans. Tonight we'll be in Romans 13. And as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be your true teacher and the living Word of God, our beloved King, Jesus Christ. Uh, again, here we are in Romans 13, Paul's epistle to the Church of Rome. Uh, we'll start right in, Romans 13, 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So Paul is telling us uh, several messages here. One, that all things are uh, in God's uh, control. No matter when um, it seems like our government may be in fallen into uh, evil hands, God has it always for the good. He is the controller of all things. And we, knew, we know through uh, his scripture that he's used pagan kings in the past, and he's used uh, evil entities for his glory, and uh, he is the ruling force behind all government. So we have to trust in the leaders that he gave us uh, for our uh, for our for our benefit. God is ultimately in control and we are supposed to obey the laws of our government. That, With that said, we have to be very careful. If our government is going against the precepts of God's word, God's word trumps what our worldly government says. So for example, if uh, the world is, uh, says that a particular, uh, a government says that a particular thing of God's word is now okay in the law and it is against God's word, we stand strong to our precept and we stand strong to God's word and we will not, uh, we will not cave in to what the world and the government tells us that uh, it should be. Uh, so it's uh, very important to know that God's word always trumps government, but we are to rely on government and trust government and obey government when it comes to all things that are not in God's word. And that's what Paul is saying, um, that God is ultimately in control and uh, he, he's got it. He's always got it. Romans 13, 2. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. So we don't resist government just to resist government. We stand straw, strong in the word of the Lord. And that's not uh, like we're taking on a battle. Remember, Christ fights our battles. He tells us to be strong. Exodus 14, 14 says, uh, the, the Lord will fight your battles. Be at peace, stay strong. And that's who we have to trust in, Jesus Christ. Remember, Christ tells us in the, uh, the Beatitudes is to be meek. Um, to if somebody strikes you on one side, let them strike you on the other. If they take one cloak, give them the other cloak. We are supposed to be strong in our faith in Christ and let Christ fight the battle. So we are to be obedient to the government mun municipalities and only stand strong against them up until prison or death if they contrary to God's law. And that's uh, very important to know that God, no matter what is happening in the world melting God down, down right, before we, uh, right before our very eyes, that he has control of all things. Praise his holy name. Romans 13, 3, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. He says, if you obey the law, then you have nothing to worry about. If you obey a, man, a, a government law, as long as it's not uh, contradicting God's law, that they're, they're put there. D you should have no fear of your government if you're doing what is right. And again, if the government is not doing what is right, that's where the Lord will come in and fight on your behalf. Um, but as Christians that are strong in the Lord, we should be voting for our politicians based on our godly values, our b biblical principles. That is what we will look for in a world leader or an earthly leader to, to run our government, somebody that is uh, raised in the way of the Lord and keeps his precepts and his commandments. And that's what we should do. We should be voting with our faith, uh, not voting in a municipality or voting with man. So Romans 13, 4, for he, is, for, for he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. So again, he's saying make sure that you're obeying the law uh, of the land, not God's law. Of course, God's law. But he's talking about municipality law. And do not fight them. 
Um, if it is not against God's principle, God put them there for a purpose and do not, uh, you know, we're going to see, do not um, try to skim on your taxes. Do not try to do unlawful things. Obey the laws of the land. Uh, if the speeding limit is 55, go 55 um, and be a good citizen. Again, remember, we are to be a shining beacon like Christ. And that calls for world, worldly ways too. So if we are of Christ, and you have his glory on your license plate, and you're doing 95 and a 25, that's probably not the best example of showing the glory of the Lord. We want to be, uh, we want to be above and beyond and be the, tri the, be, the, be the light in the darkness and make sure that we are being obedient to even man's laws. Again, as long as they do not uh, go against the precepts of God. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of the wrath, but also for conscience sake. Again, we have to be obeying them as we're obeying the Father, as we're obeying Christ the Lord, obeying um, uh, the Holy Spirit. And that's it. also when we go to work, no matter who our uh, in employer is, we work for them as we're working for God. And if they're unfair, God will expose their ways. But we work for them as we do as we're working for the Lord. We don't take uh, extra breaks. We don't skim on the time clock. We do everything from the heart. We are that beacon of Christianity that goes above and beyond. So people will say, man, that person is not only a good worker, but the morality, there's something to them. Why can't we get more workers like that? We can if they are a beacon of Christ, and we need to have that, that beacon of Christ always. Romans 13, 7, Render therefore all that are due, taxes to whom are taxes, are due customs to who customs, fear to who, whom fear, honor to honor. Again, um, the scripture tells us not even to dishonor Satan. We are uh, to rebuke Satan in the name of Christ. It's only up to God in Christ to even rebuke uh, Satan. So we are not to rebuke any uh, uh, government, government leaders. Uh, we let Christ the Lord fight our battles for us. If we have taxes that are due, as Christ said, uh, whose image is on it, pay Caesar what is Caesar's. Pay the government what is the government. If it's not fair, um, you pay it anyway and you take it to the Lord and that's what you have a process of, of, of voting here in the United States. Other places, you know, do, you, you do what is told of you and the Lord will bless you because you're doing it uh, in the name of the Lord. And, and he says, honor with honor. Uh, treat people with respect. You may not like the president of the United States, you may, uh, but you got to treat his position with respect and honor. You re respect honor. All people with honor and integrity. Again, the second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. So we have to show that respect, even though we may not agree with them politically, um, we show them the respect because of our love for Christ. So look at us and like, wow, you're against me in my political ways, but you're treating with me with morality and you're treating me with utmost respect. And that's because it's a beacon of love. Nothing greater than a young child or a teenager to say, yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. We're missing that integrity in the world today where we haven't trained up our children in the way of the Lord to show that respect and give honor to honor and give uh, our, our elderlies that respect that are due to them. More yes, ma'am, and yes, sirs can go a long way and humble ourselves and get that light of Jesus Christ in everything we do. In Romans 13, 8, he says, Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. It says, so you don't owe anybody anything. Make sure that everything is paid in full. Um, and the, the only thing is love. You can always pay more and more of love, and love is the key of all things. And if you really had to sum up the epistles of Paul, all 14 epistles of, of Paul, if you're a believer like me that Paul wrote uh, Hebrews, which I believe, which would make 14 epistles, um, you can sum it up in one word. It's a love. You sum the 66 books of the Bible up. It's one word. It's love. It's what Christ said, the two biggest commandments. Love your God with all your, whole, with all your soul, your, your, your mind, and your heart. Um, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Mean love your enemy as yourself. All the laws and the prophets were wrapped up in law, in, in, the, in love of the law. So that's what Paul's saying. Everything is about love. Let's be that beacon of love 
uh, when the world is melting down. Be that different. Uh, be that difference in this world of 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 hate, in this world of violence, in this world of uh, morality being uh, just non-existent. Let's be that beacon of light. Let's instigate and be a part of that last end time pouring out, the last pouring out of the Holy Spirit, which is upon us. Praise his holy name. Romans 13, 9, for the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear fault with witness, you shall not covet. And if there's any other commandment are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, as Christ said, love. Love is the key to all things. We don't commit adultery, we don't murder, we don't steal, we don't covet. The reason we don't should be out of love. Love for the person of the neighbor that we would hurt, love for the loved one that we would hurt, and more importantly than most, the God be love for the Most High God through Jesus Christ, knowing that if we did some of those things, we would hurt we would hurt our King of Kings and Lord of Hosts, and he, he died on the cross for us so that we could live eternity with him because of these uh, transgressions that we've all committed. And, and we have to have the Holy Spirit fill us with that conscience level that when we do or are about to do any of those things, we're overcome by our love for him. That's what compels us to do good, but that also is what compels us to stay away from these hurtful things that God has given to us. We look at these things as, uh, as uh, things in the flesh that are uh, of fun or uh, of, of pleasure, but God knows they're for hurt, the innocent people that are hurt, how it hurts other people. It's not worth it, and how, how it impacts our relationship with the Lord that we let him down because we broke one of his commandments. No matter what the pleasure is in the world, it's not worth it. And that's where the Holy Spirit fills you with the word of God, fills you with prayer to look at these opportunities. And when that, that, uh, that, that uh, temptation comes from the evil one, we can be like Joseph and walk away even when we're falsely accused. So it's all about the love, starting with the agape love of the Most High through Jesus Christ. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. It's beautiful. Love. It's all about the agape. And do this knowing the time that not, now is the high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. So again, he's saying that our salvation is nearer than we first believed, giving up self to have salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. He's given us a, Paul's telling us of the, um, the urgency we should seek. And if this word isn't more pre prevalent today than any time in the history of the word, world, it should be. We need to take urgency, urgency to loved ones and friends that have not got that agape love relationship with Jesus Christ, to share the gospel with them, to have them accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because time is of the essence. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. As we said many times, Satan's favorite day of the week is tomorrow. I'll get right with God tomorrow. I'll put off um, seeking Jesus' face to tomorrow. Well, we may not see tomorrow. And we need to have the urgency of that love and that relationship today because those things that God has awaiting for us, as Paul says, no eye can see, no ear can hear, no mind can conceive for the things that, the, that God has prepared for those who love him. We think of it as less, a, a lustly ways that these things are pleasurable that God tells us, no, they're not, they're hurtful. The things he has in store for us that we don't know yet that are sitting in the heavenly realm are the greatest gifts of all. Un un unbelievable, just will blow you away because the, the Apostle Paul, who is not one that could uh, uh, mince with words, he wrote 14 epistles, He's, uh, he, he was a talker and he couldn't even put the, his experience of the third heaven into words. And I experienced the third heaven as well, that taste of heaven and a vision of Jesus myself after two, two, two flatline, two death experiences. And I, I, as well as Paul, cannot even put it into words how glorious the world, the afterlife is, uh, is for those who believe in Jesus Christ. We are going home to a beautiful, a beautiful place. Jesus truly meant that I prepared a place for you as long as you believe and repent into me. And that place he set aside for us, the bride, the church, is everlasting and it's filled with love and unconditional love. And the feeling 
and the euphoria you get when you experience that, you can't even put into words. Praise his name. Uh, Romans 13, 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of the darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Again, let the light shine in the darkness. That's what we are to be as Christians. We are that light and the darkness. As in the church of Laodicea, neither, neither hot nor cold, I'll vomit you out of my mouth is what Christ says. You're either all in or you're all out. You can't be halfway. You can't be a, uh, a somewhat Christian. You're either all in for the name of the Lord, and that means all in, or you're all out. And that's what he's telling us. We need to be that light. We need to stand up in this world of darkness and be that light and say, hey, my God is greater. And this is a temporary place that we're in. This is boot camp for eternal life with the most high God. And we will do all things in his name and we will persevere and overcome in his glory. Again, emulating the church of Philadelphia. That's what we need to do. Receive the five crowns, as the scripture says. Emulate the church of Philadelphia in the book of Revelation. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness, not in lust, not in strife, not in envy. Envy, again, is a sign of pride. We don't envy anybody else's house, car, anything. We give up self. That's the key component of your walk with the Lord. Once in the wilderness period, he, you can find yourself giving up things, all things, for self, for his glory, and trusting that everything that he prevents, uh, puts in front of you is for his will. And our life is all intertwined to integrate with his perfect will. And that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, when we go up to the Bema seat to look at the rewards, God is only going to care about what the things that we've done in his name. What are the things that were done for his purpose? Not what kind of car we drove, not what kind of promotion we may have got, not what kind of Apple TV we got. It's all for the glory of the Lord. Are we sharing the gospel? Are we staying strong in his name? Are we witnessing? Are we walking as a beacon of light? Are we showing the fruit of the spirit? Are we sharing the gospel to people who need it? Are we seeking the face of the Lord in his word daily and seeking him in prayer constantly? That is the way, the truth, and the life. Let us walk properly as in the day, as we said, no reverently. And we're finishing up in Romans 13, 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Let the fleshly ways die. We are born again. When we're born again, that means we've, our fleshly ways have died. Christ has wiped away those sins. As the prophet Isaiah said, your sins will be as scarlet, but they washed white as snow. They're gone. They're forgotten. Past, present, and future sins are gone. And the flesh, we died. As in the scripture, Ecclesiastes, it says, Solomon says, the day of your death is more precious than the day of your birth. Well, he means the day of your fleshly death when you've been born again, because that's truly when life starts after you've passed the test of accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and walk through the wilderness period of the boot camp to be ready for eternal life with the Most High God. And all things are done through Jesus Christ and giving up the lust. Lust is for self. Lust is for personal gain. Giving up self is the first step to having a loving, agape relationship and walking hand in hand with the Most High God through the blood of our King of Kings and Lord of Hosts, Jesus Christ. We pray that Romans 13 has been an absolute blessing to you. Until next week to Romans 14, may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless each and every one of you. Amen.